Hey there, this is Derek. I want to talk with you today about uh, constraints and how to use them to uh, control an object. Basically, um, so that you can control when an object picks something up or a character picks something up. We'll use a constraint for that. Um, so let me demonstrate uh, what I'm talking about here. So in this video, um, I have a character and he picks up a box and he puts it on a shelf. Um, so essentially what I have is I have this box and it's connected to, it's, it's in a group and it's going to be controlled by a few things. So if I was to show this animation non-rendered but in actually in the workspace, this is what it looks like. Notice I have these, these things, these are called locators and they're uh, basically used in this example to ha maintain possession of this box object. So right now the yellow locator has a parent constraint on that. Uh, the box has three constraints. It has a yellow, a pink, and a green. A yellow, pink, and a green. When the parent constraints are active, they are controlling the box's translation and rotation uh, con uh, attributes. So currently the yellow weight or the yellow locator's weight is turned on. One means it's on, zero means it's off. So this box is being controlled by three different things, but not all at the same time. Currently, only the yellow one is controlling it. So wherever I animate this yellow point or locator, that box is going to move. Now, there's a point in time when I have to take the, pos the possession and turn off the yellow pointer or locator and turn on the pink one. So now the loc the box is being controlled by the pink box. So now it sticks to the pink locator and I can raise that. The pink locator is actually just parented to the joint in the character's hand. So in a character there's a skeleton and the skeleton has joints uh, that move the geometry and so that pink locator is just parented, uh, it's just a following essentially the joint. So wherever I move the hand, that locator goes, and because the box is now uh, being controlled by that locator, it's going to move wherever it goes. And then it's going to be, I'm going to move it up to the shelf, and this locator, the green one, is then going to take possession, transferring the value, the weight value, the, the, the constraint has a weight value, it's on or off, or it can be in between and you can actually have multiple objects pulling depending on the amount of weight the locator has. So essentially I'm going to be passing it up there and then turning on that object and that's where the box will stay. So as long as the box is being controlled by this parent constraint, it's going to stay with this locator. And so that's the basic idea. So what we end up seeing is the box slide in, the character grab the box and put it on the shelf. Now, I also have the box inside a group. So if I actually go to this scene, here's the box. Here's the, if I go into my hypergraph, I actually have the box inside a group and uh, the constraint is constraining the box group and then the actual geometry is inside of that. So I'm actually moving this around because then that gives me independent control of this so that when I put it up on the shelf and it jiggles a little bit I actually animate just the box inside the group. The group is being controlled by the locator, the locator on the shelf and wherever that goes and it's not going anywhere but if I was to move that while the box is uh, currently connected to it, it's going to move all the other constraints, uh, these guys and these guys no longer have possession of it. So let me look at something, let's look at parent constraints for a second. So in this scene I have a box, okay? This box, I'm going to make a group, I'll bring up my hyper, hyper graph, 
uh, and so I have a box. I'm going to put that box in a group. Uh, I can create a null object. If I want to create those locators, you can go down and just create locator, and it will create a new locator for you. So if I wanted to make one create locator, I just go there, it'll create a locator, and, and here it is. I'm not going to use that, but that's how I made these. If I wanted to change the colors of my locator, that's a setting in the attributes. And I have to go to my display settings, drawing overrides, and my object display. So I have object display, drawing overrides, I have to enable overrides, and then I can choose the color that I want, and I want I want them to be distinct, so I'm going to do this. So I'm going to take this object, and I'm going to put it in a group. Now, I can go to Create, Empty Group. Here's my empty group, and I can grab this, and I can put it inside of that by just dragging it. So now I have a null object in the middle con containing my object, my cube. So this is what I want to show you. When I take an object like this, this object here inside of this group. I'm going to select the group uh, and here's my locator. I'm going to change this and just call this yellow locator just so I can tell what it, which one it is. Okay. And what I want to do is I want that I want that yellow locator to constrain this box. So I select the object that I want to constrain. I select the group node. Shift select the group because I want it to constrain the group. And then I go up to my animations menu set because constraints are under the animations and there's a variety of constraints. I'm going to go to my parent constraint because a parent constraint constrains the translation where something is and the rotation and how it's oriented. Uh, so translation Translation is the same as point, where it is in space, and orientation is the same as rotation, how it's oriented. So I'm going to go to my parent options box real quick. And I'm going to hit edit reset settings. Now notice that we have a maintain offset value up here. Uh, that can be used to, uh, there's two ways. If I don't have that selected, then the, the, the insertion point or the uh, the pivot point of my object or my group is going to snap exactly to the location of my locator and that's okay once and that's actually okay watch when I when I hit apply uh, the box snaps right there now one thing that I want you to see is you have a weight value and I'm gonna minimize my screen for a second and I'm gonna choose my null object and if I go to my channel box you'll see that I have a yellow locator weight attribute added now and it has a value of 1. Um, and so what happens, I can control when that attribute is on or off. So currently if it's on and I select my yellow locator, the box is going to move around. I'm actually moving the null object and notice that I have a null constraint here that's saying that it is uh, this group is constrained to this object. Okay, If I was to look at my objects through its uh, input-output, I can see that the yellow locator and the null object share a parent constraint. Now, if I turn off this weight value, then my box <coughs> or my, <coughs> my null object is no longer being controlled by that. All right, so I'm going to <clears throat> go back here. I'm going to turn, and notice that the object doesn't stick to the uh, doesn't stick to it anymore. Now, watch what happens uh, now. I can have more than one constraint. So I'm going to turn off this constraint for a second, and I'm going to say the pink locator. Um, I want the pink locator to constrain the box. So I'm going to say this is the constraining object. This is the object to actually this is the constraining object. This is the object to be constrained. It already has this information on it 
this, this blue information says that there is something controlling the translation values and the rotation values, and we know that that's the constraint. I'm going to go back to constraint, go to parent constraint options box. I had it open. Uh, I uh, do not want to maintain offset at the moment. I'm going to hit apply, and it snaps over to this one. Now, now if I go back to my null object and I look, I have two weights uh, here. I have a yellow weight. If I turn that on, notice that the box is now being pulled between both locators. Wherever the locators go, the box has a weight pulling it towards one or the other. If I reduce one of the one of the weight values, so if I reduce this, say that I only have 0.3 or 3 tenths of a, uh, of a per, uh, 30 percent of a weight value, then it's going to pull less from here and more to this one. This one has a full weight on it, and uh, this one has, the yellow one has less. If I wanted to increase that and pull it over like so, I could do that. Okay? Again, I do the same thing. If I don't have any weight on it, the box is just going to kind of <clears throat> be out here on its own. Now I want the green locator to also constrain the, <clears throat> the null. Okay. Now I have all three, all three of these are now part of my, if I put all three, if I turn all three of these on, then it's going to have to manage that point, that box is going to be pulled between all three of these objects. Okay. So essentially what I'm doing in the example is I'm instantaneously turning on the values of each one of these locators. When I want this one to control the object, I'm going to have its weight value on in a stepped keyframe meaning that it's going to instantly, it's going to hold it, and then it's going to hold it until it, this one takes over. And it's going to just be instantly, it's on and in possession, then that one turns off, and this one turns on at the exact same time. And then this one takes over. Okay? Now, if I didn't have, so I'm going to, I'm going to undo all these uh, for a second. So this is if the object ha has the, uh, if I do not maintain offset. So currently it's pulling this object to this object's location. Okay, uh, I'm going to go back to my null object. I'm going to bring down my hypergraph again. I'm going to go to my input output values and what I want to do is uh, I'm essentially going to delete uh, I want to delete my constraints on my box without hopefully deleting my box. So here's my null. Uh, I do not have any constraints on there anymore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now do the same thing, only not keep the uh, constraints. Uh, it's not going to pull it. So watch. So my yellow object and my box, well my, my yellow object and my group node, constraint, parent constraint, and I can say maintain offset. So I'm going to say apply. Notice that the object does not go anywhere, but yet it still is under control. Um, same with my pink. I'm going to do the same thing. This is the constraining object. This is the object being constrained. Apply. This is the constraining object. This is the object being constrained. And apply. Now, I still have I still have this box being manipulated, but it's not snapping directly to the object, okay? Okay, so what I want to be able to do then is to animate this box uh, so that it can be passed from one control to another. And so essentially, it's basically like this. I'm going to have the constraint value animated uh, sorry, of my null, null object, I have these constraints and I have to set keys on when they are on and when they are off. So let's try this. I'm going to set this up so that I use my 